Every collector dreams of owning one, or more than one, doll with her original trousseau of all of her possessions that she had at the time that she was made and that have lived with her ever since. To own a doll with a trousseau that also has an extraordinary story that accompanies her is a, an unparalleled dream. And I'm proud, I'm so proud to present this uh, doll to you from the Lorna Lieberman collection. This is a sanitary fair commission doll that was owned or won or bought, we don't know, by Miss Annie Kelly in 1863. Now, the sanitary um, commission fairs, if any of you have watched the Ken Burns whole series on the Civil War, you'll have, see a whole chapter devoted to these. During the time of the, of the Civil War, the, uh, the soldiers didn't, there was not enough money. They didn't have uniforms, they didn't have food, they didn't have hospitals or, or care in the hospitals or medical supplies. So people rallied together to have fundraising charities to help bring all of these uh, needed pieces to the soldiers. And one of the ways they raised money was to hold great charity bazaars and functions. And you can find photographs of these. These were elaborate affairs. They were held in big convention halls in major cities in Boston in 1863 in December in the Grand Music Hall one of the charity fairs was held. There was grand bunting and flags all over, and there were um, all sorts of contests and eating um, halls and wonderful objects for sale that were handmade, and all of the funds for the sale of these items would go to support the soldiers, the Sanitary Commission Fairs. And the dolls became known as the Sanitary Commission Dolls because people would dress a doll to be presented at the fair. Usually they were simple affairs. I'm gonna show you one in a minute, simple dolls. But every once in a while, there would be a doll presented that had an elaborate trousseau that went with her. In 1863, the Boston newspaper published an article about the sanitary fair uh, charity that was being held in the music hall at, that December. And they said that 15 dolls were sold at that fair, including one doll with a trousseau. That is this doll. The doll was acquired by young Miss Annie Kelly. She was just like nine years old at the time. And it's not clear if she won it at a raffle or if she purchased it outright. That documentation is not known. What is known is that young Miss Annie Kelly kept this doll and her possessions until she died in 1947 at the age of 93. She kept this doll. At that time, the doll passed into the hands of two early doll collectors from the New England area, um, and then eventually passed into the hands of Lorna Lieberman. A complete inventory was made of all of the doll's possessions at the time, and they are mostly intact, with the exception, I think, of two of the gowns are, not, are no longer here, but everything else is still intact with the doll. And let me just show you some of the pieces. So of course, the gown she's wearing is stunning. And to have, you know, this ice blue silk, it was, has always been very, very susceptible to, to frailty over the years, just natural wear. But this one has just remained unbelievably intact. It's edged with black Alison silk lace all around and little black bead buttons. She has a black velvet cap. I love this jacket. Look at the back of it. Pagoda sleeves. Quilted jacket for those New England winters. Em white embroidery all around. And again, the black threaded lace edging. I'm just showing you some of the pieces that are my favorites. I love this um, stole. The knit stole with the faux ermine trim. And then the little matching muff that would go with it with the blue silk lining. And look, the stole has those little pom-pom things hanging down. That's really sweet. Um, an, a wonderful blue silk bonnet that rather matches her dress. She has the parasol, the bone tip parasol. She has the blue kidskin gloves. She has the brown kidskin gloves with little white edging. In addition to the shoes she's wearing, she has the black little slippers, and I want to turn it over so you can see how they're hand stitched. Beautifully made with their little decorations on the front. And another simple little pair, narrow to fit her narrow little feet. I'm going to hold them up so you can see. 
This all has hand stitching to form these little slippers with the little blue trim. So then we have this wonderful little basket. We have another little basket. We have this wonderful bonnet. I love paisleys, and so whenever I find a, a shawl that was made for a doll with the paisley, I always like to look at it. And this has the red, um, the red wool with a fringed edging and the paisley um, ribbon around the outside. Another wonderful jacket of twill with the red twi trim. And I wish you could see all of these in great detail because you could see that not only is it the red, cord red cording around the outside, but underneath that, is another layer of like a white um, um, plush border, which is very nice. And again, those very desirable um, wide sleeves. There is a black jacket. There is this beautiful top, extraordinary black silk taffeta and velvet gown, again with beautiful pagoda sleeves and rich trim. It just goes on and on and on. And then there is, in case you should, which I can't imagine you ever would, the little beaded purse, forget me not. Miss Annie Kelly's doll. She kept it for all of her 93 years, one at the Boston Sanitary Fair Commission in 1863. An absolute treasure. I wanted to show you a few more dolls that were inspired by or part of this general genre of charity dolls, or in the case of the gentleman here in my right, were just in the style of the, of the Civil War. He's a wonderful porcelain doll, and he's wearing his um, military uniform, slightly oversized for him, I think, particularly the hat, but the hat was likely um, purchased from a military supply place as um, a symbol of the hats that were being worn by the soldiers, and it was designed to be put on this doll. He's wearing this great uniform, and he's carrying his sword, and he is carrying, which I think is even more interesting because I haven't seen this before, this leather duffel bag in which he is carrying his various accoutrements. Very, very interesting uh, doll to watch. I, I could be um, really um, involved with these dolls at this point, having watched that Ken Burns series. And if any of you, I know I'm coming kind of late to the table to be watching it because it came out quite a few years ago. But it's an extraordinary series and story of our American history, and I urge everyone to watch it if you haven't. Now, staying with the Sanitary Fair Commission doll, look at this little lady, which you think, oh, this is a pretty doll, and she has beautiful hair and beautifully sculpted. Let me turn it around and show you. And then let me tell you about her costume, because she has a pincushion base and her original costume and a paper label that is pinned to the bottom of it. And I will read it to you, although I think you may see it on the camera. But it says, doll pincushion made for one of the fairs for the Sanitary Commission during the Civil War. So as you can see, during the Sanitary Commission fairs, many levels of dolls and types of dolls were made, and they were all for fundraising for the soldiers who so badly needed help. Now, the making of dolls for charity purposes, has a, it's, a, it's a long tradition. Uh, and there are so many examples. I think you could write volumes of books about dolls that were made for charity events. One of the wonderful ones in American history is this beautiful doll made, <coughs> known as the Missionary Rag Babies, made by Julia Beecher. Beecher of the Beecher family, who you know more um, notably for her, I think it was her aunt, Julia Ward Beecher, who wrote what? I mean, Harriet Ward Beecher, who wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin and who became this very, very celebrated author. And her uncle, who was a very famous abolitionist. Well, later on in the 1890s, Julia Beecher, living in New York, 
decided that she would try to raise, make mo dolls to raise money, again, for charity funds. And she started making her dolls that were known as the, um, as the missionary rag babies. And they were done by her congregational church in Elmira, New York, under her instruction. I have seen few examples of these dolls because they're very, very rare to find. I have never seen one with extraordinary facial painting like this doll has. Wonderful, wonderful expression. It's just a fabulous doll. Now, next to her is another wonderful doll made in, in the American folk tradition and eventually morphing into becoming a charity doll. And this is a doll known as Miss Chitty. And she was made in um, Old Salem, North Carolina. And she's known as the predecessor of the Maggie Bessie, more famous dolls that were done, again, as charity benefit dolls from a church in Old Salem. And the style of the doll, the painting of it, is reminiscent of that. And it's said to have inspired the Maggie Bessie. The Miss Chitty dolls are, again, fall in the category of American folk dolls that are certainly not one of a kind, but verging on few of a kind. They are so, so rare to find. Look at the little stitched on ears. Look at the beautiful painting of the face. This is the original costume, by the way. Frail though it may be, and patched and worn though it may be, it is the original costume of the Miss Chitty doll. One of my favorites of the charity dolls is the Madame Paderewski doll. Um, after World War I, Many, there were many Polish um, immigrants who had who fled to Paris, so the aristocrats, because they were being tortured and war-torn. So they flew to Paris, and Madame Paderewski, who came from a very wealthy, aristocratic, educated background, decided to raise funds for the people back home who so desperately needed help. And she opened a small studio in Paris, and she created what have become known as the Polish relief dolls. They have a very, very distinctive look, and one of the things that is so wonderful is many of them still bear their original metal with an inscription on the back side, and I want to read you what that inscription says. It says, um, Polish, Relief, Polish Victims Relief Fund, health and happiness to you, kind doll lover who by taking into your heart and home one of my little doll waifs of Poland have fed a starving mother or child in that saddest land. Helen Paderewski, copyright 1915. Uh, Helen Paderewski came to America and held uh, various salons in America where she also sold her dolls. They're very, very rare to find today. They have a very distinctive look and just wonderful.